Welcome to the Global Gaming Business Podcast, the industry's first and longest running podcast now in our 17th year. I'm Roger Gross, the publisher of GGB, and this week we sit down with Sequoia Simmermeyer, the chairman of the National Indian Gaming Commission, on his time in office and what he hopes to accomplish in the remainder of his term. The GGB Podcast is sponsored by IGT. Give your players what they came for with IGT's top performing themes, featuring the biggest jackpots. IGT's wide area progressives draw a crowd on every casino floor. Visit IGT.com for more information. Welcome to the Global Gaming Business Podcast. Our guest today is NIGC Chairman Sequoia Simmermeyer. Uh, Chairman, thanks for joining us. It's a, it's an honor to meet with you here. No, thank you, Mr. Gross. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank well, you. You know, it's Roger, not. Okay, Roger. <laughs> that might, Mr. Gross is my father. <laughs> thanks, Roger. Well, thanks for joining us. It's uh, it's uh, really fun to, to see people here at, at the Naga Trade Show again, and uh, you know, hooking up with people. And uh, how, how has the show been for you so far? It's been great. It's been exciting. We got a good opportunity for some of our leadership team. My mm-hmm. colleague on the commission, the vice chair. Uh, is here as well, and we've seen a lot of folks we haven't seen in person for some time, so sure, it's great. Sure, sure. So we, uh, we just came out with our tribal annual tribal government gaming magazine, and you did an article for us in there about, about the current state of the NIGC, and thank you for doing that. It was an excellent piece. Uh, uh, we also did a history of the NIGC, so, uh, uh, and also the 35th anniversary of the Cabazon decision. So all these things uh, you know, came into, into play uh, in the magazine, and it, I, I'm just very proud of the, the content of the magazine. What does it mean to you to have, have the role leading this agency that, that really was born in those days? Well, first, thank you for that article opportunity, and thank you for the, the scope of what you covered in that magazine, this edition. It's a, it's a really important history, and it influences so many parts of where the industry is going in the future. So sure. thank you for that. But I think that um, you know any opportunity for public service is, is, is an opportunity to be part of a, a bigger mission. Mm-hmm. I think that the, the mission for the National Indian Gaming Commission and the broader regulatory community uh, is an important mission, and I think that I see that every day with the staff at NIGC, whether sure. in the regions or the headquarters, um, you know, dedicating their subject matter expertise and talent towards this mission is, is really important. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that that's a good opportunity for um, for the community to, to be able to have such a strong mission, and sure. I take that, I'm really honored to have that role that I can play. Mm-hmm. I think that um, uh, public service also presents an opportunity for, for servant leadership in many ways, and so I think that's also in honor for all of us who, who work in that, that type of a role. Sure, sure, great. One of the stories we have in the magazine is, is pretty much a history of the NIGC. Uh, it was, this idea was given to me by Janet McCaig, who was one of the original commissioners back in, uh, in the ni- early 90s here. Uh, and uh, you know, she, she had some great stories, and uh, hopefully people will read it about how difficult it was in those days. They didn't have offices on their own, and, uh, and there wasn't a lot of respect, either, either from the government side or the tribal side. And, uh, and obviously, they had changed down through the years. But what why has it changed so dramatically? Well, I'm not an agency historian per se, so I, but I, I do know that you know at that time it was establishing a new framework. Mm-hmm. You know, the industry was already in place and integrating the new framework into how the industry operated. Mm-hmm. You know, presented its own challenges and growing pains. And um, the early commission should absolutely be commended for the work that they've done to, to set a tone and set a path. Mm-hmm. I know that um, over the course of the agency, the opportunity to collaborate as part of a bigger regulatory community with tribes and with operations and other stakeholders, I think it's added to the success of it. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's helped to uh, implement and, or I should say interpret a more consistent and um, predictable um, implementation of of policy objectives that that IGRA laid out, Mm -hmm. which I think has also contributed to to its growth and, and, and the role it plays today. Sure. Well, I've had the honor, actually, of, of interviewing every uh, chairman of the, of the commission since, since its inception in the 90s, and there's been some amazing people, uh, you know, leading this, this commission, including yourself. Uh, um, d- does, it, does it humble you a little bit to, to know uh, these, these trailblazers that went before you? Yeah, there's absolutely strong talent, and mm-hmm. I feel really honored to be able to, um, you know, to have the opportunity to see this perspective. Sure. And I know that even in our day-to-day work, um, we regularly look back to the um, interpretations and the roles that they've made. You know, this this during the pandemic, we um, looked a lot back to past commissioners' interpretations mm-hmm. of regulations and policies, and it sure. helped to, to shape it. And the forethought that they had to take on some of those issues has been very helpful mm-hmm. uh, in the work we do today. So the column you wrote, uh, you, you announced a, a, pr- a pr- uh, program called the Three for Thirty Five Project. Yes. Uh, what, what was the impetus behind that? Sure. We. Uh, 
the agencies had a focus in, 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 in four areas in mm -hmm. the last in recent years, and one of those areas is preparedness across the regulatory community, sure. and um, the opportunity that exists to help uh, prepare the regulatory workforce falls in line with that objective. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so they, we, in doing this project, are, are looking at the opportunity to uh, remind the public about the unique regulatory structure and the unique, uh, unique aspects of the Indian gaming industry mm -hmm. that were affirmed in the Cabazon case 35 years ago. Sure. Uh, and also to try to facilitate a conversation across the regulatory community about our workforce and how to plan for the next 35 years. Mm -hmm. And so we've identified uh, three areas of discussion that we want to use to help facilitate that conversation um, okay. and looking at skill planning, mm -hmm. you know, what uh, what skills are regulatory bodies investing in sure. in order to, to prepare for the future, the, the always evolving industry from mm -hmm. a regulator's perspective, looking at um, strategic recruitment and, you know, whether it's a, a large community uh, of a, a workforce that you're drawing from or a small rural community, maintaining continuity of operations is mm -hmm. an important uh, role that the regulatory body you know, must play. So right. how do they prepare for that developed pipeline? Uh, and then finally, looking at knowledge retention. And as we uh, grow and the industry matures and reaches different milestones, how do you incorporate the knowledge from um, uh, past regulatory subject matter experts and, mm -hmm. and use that to build in the future? Okay, great. So, um, you know, I, I've mentioned how, how the quality of the, of the, the chairman and, and also the other commissioners, but but the staff is really important too. I mean, uh, you've had people you have people on the staff there that have been there almost from the beginning, and, and some some long long serving uh, uh, dedicated public servants there. Um, how how are you going to replace them when they get some time to retire? No, absolutely. I think maintaining that continuity of operations is important. Uh, I think um, being strategic and thoughtful about how we are uh, training up mm -hmm. uh, subject matter experts within our, any organization, both in ours, we made that, we right. made that a priority, right. and, um, and really being thoughtful about where do we need to acquire new expertise. Mm -hmm. so technology has been a strong investment area for us in recent years, right. and getting on uh, individuals who can help us to remain relevant in the regulatory community right. has been important, um, but also as we uh, whenever we're you know, moving forward, we want to make sure that we're consistent and predictable, mm -hmm. but we also want to make sure that we're doing it from a place of knowledge for sure. what we've done before. Sure. Right, so involving right. a broad group in those decisions is really important, and you're sure. right, it's a very talented staff and mm -hmm. dedicated to using their talents to uh, for a good mission. Right, and, and they have institutional knowledge of what, what's gone on before as well. Absolutely, yeah. So. Um, you know, the NIGC is known for, for doing tribal consultations. Uh, you know, I've I followed Chairman Hogan when he was in. in you know, he, he did a bunch of them around the country, and I followed him for a few times there. Uh, so, how, how do you use uh, um, the tribal consultation about the, you know finding out what the real issues are in, in tribal government gaming? Oh, absolutely. We have um, one of the four. In addition to preparedness across the regulatory community, another focus area for us has been in the area of. Uh, being innovative and outreach and collaboration. Mm -hmm. Consultation is one aspect of that. It's sure. an important aspect, not just for good decision making, but it's also important because it is a way to develop and cultivate the governmental authorities and be aware of those authorities that are so important to the federal tribal relationship. Right. That's a unique um, a responsibility that you know every federal actor you know has. Sure. Uh, the uh, way that we approach consultation has been a little bit innovative during the last uh, year and a half. Right, yeah, you and, had to be innovative. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we, we built on uh, a lot of the virtual tools, and for the first time mm -hmm. ever, the agency had uh, uh, all virtual um, platforms for our, our dialogue with tribes. Okay. We also really tried to use our, our website and other ways mm -hmm. to kind of get, in, get and collect information and perspectives from tribes. Right. Uh, and we also, because of the length of time since we last consulted with tribes, uh, tried to organize the information. We we consulted on 17 different topics, and so we organized into sort of three series of consultations. Sure. And uh, by doing that, we're hoping to sort of help tribes to, to marshal their resources and their subject matter experts. So we've done that as, as one way to, um, uh, you know, have pointed conversations on very specific potential actions, but mm -hmm. also to have sort of broader discussions about emerging areas. Uh, like technology and like ways to be more efficient in the in our in our decision making processes. Sure. Uh, so I think from out of those, the next steps that'll come are going to be diverse, and some of them might require further discussion. Uh, some of them might might be ready for for next steps and action items. Mm -hmm. But that's definitely consultation is important to that. Uh, looking at other ways to be collaborative that may not rise to the formality of consultation 
has been important to us too. We've tried to establish some new platforms for that. Sure. You know, for the first time, we're doing summer summits with mm -hmm. the regions. The last year, we're going to include that again this year to have a, a regional perspective to influence the, the national NIGC agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also engaged tribes uh, in our budget development process to make us more forward-looking and have made that uh, institutional part for the last two years, and we're doing that again this summer as part of that mm -hmm. process. So. Um, and, and, and using these virtual tools to kind of communicate our current state of operations sure. is, is important too. So sure. we're using all of those to make sure that we're responsive and being informed. Uh, but that is a, is a primary goal of consultation is to make sure that we have an awareness of the impact that a potential action is going to have. Sure. And the tribes have responded to this? I think so. I think we have uh, in our virtual format, which is you know different and, mm -hmm. and new for our, the way that we've been conducting uh, these, We've had a strong, and in some cases, stronger than in-person mm -hmm. and, and broader uh, uh, feedback on that. Sure. Um, and I think that uh, um, it's been a, it's been a positive thing. Mm -hmm. Great. So obviously, you know, your agency has a lot of contact with the the tribal gaming commissions, uh, and you know, just knowing the public side more more than, more than the tribal side. The public side, most of the time, somebody comes onto a gaming commission, they don't really know a lot about gaming to begin with. So how do, how do you participate in in you know informing them on, on how gaming works and what what regulatory the regulatory process is at the federal level? Sure. Well, we have. Um during the past two years especially really expanded the reach of our training program mm -hmm. which is the primary way that you know the NIGC meets its responsibilities under IGRA to provide technical assistance sure. and we've not only used virtual tools that have come about because of the pandemic and trying to be mindful mm -hmm. of, of budgets and other uncertainty restrictions on tribes right we've also looked at streamlining the content of the courses we're offering in that area right and we've looked at making them more uh, case study interactive based and because of that We've been able to uh, be more cost-effective, more accessible, and uh, average, you know, a much broader turnout. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, getting using those those tools to to, to educate and to outreach is, is one important aspect of sure. that. Uh, our compliance division and um, and particularly the regional office is another important aspect of that. And we have had. Um, really worked hard on trying to elevate the level and the role of the regional directors mm -hmm. in maintaining that local level contact. Sure. We did that quite a bit through the pandemic and, and I think that's one way where we make that initial outreach and we target communities, particularly if they're rural communities, and trying to um, achieve that, that connection and develop that relationship. Sure, sure. Nonstop thrills meet massive jackpots. IGT's wide area progressives draw a crowd on every floor with the well-known brands like Wheel of Fortune Slots and Megabucks. IGT's newest game, Money Mania, is based off player favorites Cleopatra and Pharaoh's Fortune. Money Mania brings the excitement with a fast-hitting wide area progressive jackpot. Give your players what they came for with the top performing themes featuring the biggest jackpots. Visit IGT.com for more details. So how, how do you, you know, find the, the regional directors, basically? Obviously, these, these people have to have knowledge of, of the regulatory process as well and knowledge of, of gaming on top of that. Uh, are, are these people that you promote from within, or, or do, do you go outside and hire maybe former uh, tribal commissioners? A little bit of both. Yeah. I think it's definitely a position that benefits from um, having an understanding of the NIGC structure. Right. But we also have regional directors you know, in the past that have come from outside and brought some really valuable perspectives. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's a, a, a kind of a, a really important aspect of the role they play is to uh, be strong communicators and diplomatic and have an understanding of the position's uh, role in, in, in helping to communicate NIGC's unique responsibilities mm -hmm. and also in informing the NIGC's national agenda and uh, bringing, helping to bring tribes from their region, their unique needs to the table. So through summits it's been important. We've also uh, in the last two years uh, made it a priority to involve them in reviewing some of the um, decision making whether it's uh, ordinances or, or management contract reviews mm -hmm. that the chair does. Right. Bringing that regional director perspective to the decision making process has also been really important but they're very valuable really talented parts of the sure, team. Sure, I understand. So another another aspect of the NIGC is, is a law enforcement aspect. You know, whenever whenever there's something wrong in a tribal casino, you guys have to come in and, and, and figure out what's going on. So how, how does that work? Uh, if you get a report that that something's amiss in one of the casinos, do you do you send out investigators? We have, uh, you know, we 
we any actionable information mm -hmm. you know we respond to right we also within the statute have a responsibility to refer matters mm -hmm. uh, to law enforcement sure. and so developing and maintaining those interagency relationships mm -hmm. with law enforcement whether at Treasury or mm -hmm. the Department of Justice or within the FBI there mm -hmm. are really important parts of what we do sure um, so we have those relationships we have within our compliance team a real diversity of backgrounds and expertise mm -hmm. uh, former law enforcement officials and, and auditors and individuals from state regulatory bodies as well as individuals from tribal regulatory bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, so that all helps in developing that, that network with the law enforcement community to make sure we're responding and right. following up. I know in the past some of the commissioners have had law enforcement backgrounds mm -hmm. as well. I mean, that, that must be a great assistance in, in that case. Absolutely. Commissioner Choney was, was one who came from the, with having a strong background mm -hmm. others. The, um, uh, I think it's particularly helpful uh, that we've been able in the past to develop strong relationships with these federal agencies. Mm -hmm. um, in the area of, um, of uh, cybersecurity has been one in particular that we're sure, focused right. on where there's a lot of not just subject matter expertise but other um, opportunities to develop outreach mm -hmm. and, and compliance and, and help in that area as well. Sure, sure. So. Um you, you, the NIGC's relationship with Interior has always been kind of an arm's length, I guess I, I would say. But but in in this case, uh, you know, we now have the, the first Secretary of the Interior who's a Native American woman. Uh, we've got the head of the BIA who's, who's a former uh, leader of a tribe in Michigan. I mean, this must make it a little easier for, for the NIGC to to you know uh, communicate with with Interior. Is it or does that make a difference at all? Sure. I mean, I can. My experience is in in, in 2015, I was first appointed by then Secretary mm -hmm. of Interior Jewell to the commission. And right. so during the, the last three administrations that, that I have um, uh, been on the commission, I think that there is, you know, during that time, a, a good relationship, particularly at the staff level, uh, between the Interior and the NIGC. Right. Um, it's important that, um, you know, decision making is, is legally defensible. So mm -hmm. having those lines of communication is, is particularly important. And I think that that's one where there's been a lot of growth and strength in that area. Um, we also, with in terms of what the Indian Regulatory Act anticipated, are you know an independent investigatory authority, and so I think there's always been a, a respect for that as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having said that, it, it's uh, it's um, it's a terrific thing that these uh, two leaders are in these positions mm -hmm. because of the perspectives that they bring. Sure. In terms of implementation of the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act framework and the unique responsibilities that lie with Interior, um, it's important that there's uh, predictability and there's consistency, but it's also important that it's responsive. And the skills that they have uh, as tribal advocates mm -hmm. is is invaluable in that area to understand uh, what the needs are emerging and how they have been handled in the past is mm -hmm. extremely important. Uh, you know, their dedication and commitment as Native people active in their communities is a, is a very exciting thing as well. Um, and their perspective as um, as lawmakers, whether as a state lawmaker, a federal lawmaker, a tribal lawmaker, it's important for the regulatory community um, to have an understanding of how lawmakers identify and interpret and set out those policy objectives. Mm -hmm. uh, and that provides the, the framework for the regulatory community to uh, understand and interpret its role. Mm -hmm. So having that perspective, while not necessarily directly relate to, um, uh, uh, it, it contributes to the overall uh, benefit of the uh, of the regulatory framework sure, uh, sure. for IGRA, so it's it's exciting thing, and, and they're great individuals. Yes, yeah, no question. Uh, there's a couple of tribes in California that are that are either landless right now, or, or they're moving their their uh, the casino from their remote reservation to a, to a more popular area, populated area. Uh, do you have any role when when, when they do that? Uh, the the land determinations, I think, are are matters for for Interior. Mm -hmm. You know, where there's legal analysis. The, right. The the, uh, the legal staff work together to look at those issues, mm -hmm. and, and compacts. Uh, that's again, that's under the purview of the BIA. Absolutely, that's definitely a, a role that I think Igra anticipates that the secretary's role, and um, and that's not. I know that they're consulting on on the regulations there, mm -hmm. and I think that's a great opportunity for for tribes to weigh in in that process. But sure. it's not in the approval process. We do not have a role. Okay, great. So your time, your term is expiring later this year. Uh, what would you like? To, would you like to be reappointed, or are you ready for your next challenge? <laughs> well, I know that you know. My, I started uh, as chairman in January 2020 for the three-year term, right. and pretty soon after that, our focus was on responding to the pandemic and, right. and both internal with our operations mm -hmm. and and trying to meet our responsibilities externally as a regulatory body. Um, 
you know, I haven't thought beyond, you know, my, my right. term right now, and mm -hmm. so just focused on, on on moving forward with our projects, particularly in our four focus areas. Sure. Uh, seeing a lot of opportunity for um, promoting this message of the importance of the regulatory workforce mm -hmm. developing uh, these technology um, improvements that I think are a great opportunity for the industry and the regulatory community to play a role in articulating what risks and what opportunities exist in the cybersecurity space mm -hmm. is, a, is a good opportunity uh, for the regulatory community. Great. So, so what would you like to get accomplished, really, th before the end of your term? Well, I think looking at more at, at developing um, uh, next steps in those areas, mm -hmm. workforce and technology, I think also looking at the opportunity to uh, institutionalize and promote the way that we have been doing outreach, sure. those platforms right. I talked about. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that will, um, you know, help to serve the mission, you know, for the agency in the future. So great. those are, I think, important things that we can get done. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I think you've done a great job. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a difficult job. Uh, people don't realize how how, uh, how many balls you have in the air at all times because, uh, you know, you, you have the regulatory role, you have the law enforcement role, and, and then the, the communication with all the, the different tribes around the country. That must, must be very difficult. How, how, how have you found that to be uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the responsiveness of your agency to, to the tribes? Well, we work hard to be as responsive as possible. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, um, talking about those pillars of the work that we do, agency accountability is one thing that right. we work really hard on, uh, making a focus area of being efficient in responding and meeting our responsibilities and being clear about what roles we do have and what roles we, we don't have. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that um, that's an important thing that during the pandemic as a, you know, working remotely and uh, we found some ways to be uh, more efficient in those areas and sure. kind of anticipate things. Uh, and found new ways to kind of communicate. But mm -hmm. I think uh, it's always can be an exciting thing and it uh, kind of invigorates our agency when we do get a chance to, to, to whether it's through site visits, whether it's through outreach like we're doing here, whether it's through um, other types of uh, our training and the technical assistance that we provide, there are great opportunities to really improve how we do things by sure. learning from what's going on mm -hmm. and also communicate what our goals are and look for that collaboration. Great. Well, Chairman, thanks for taking the time. It's really good to catch up with you, especially in person. We did this virtually last time, yes. and uh, I, I much prefer the in-person uh, experience. So thanks for taking the time, and, and good luck with the rest of the show. Thanks, Roger. Good to see you, too. Hope you enjoyed this week's GGB podcast with thanks again to IGT. Give your players what they came for with IGT's top for horning themes featuring the biggest jackpots. IGT's wide area progressives draw a crowd on every casino floor. Visit IGT.com for more information. To learn more about regulation and tribal gaming in the United States, visit GGBmagazine.com or our annual Indian gaming publication, TribalGovernmentGaming.com. Subscribe to GGB News to get all the news of the gaming industry delivered to your desktop every Monday morning. Sign up at ggbnews.com and use the coupon code GGB180 for a free subscription. Don't miss a single episode of the podcast. Subscribe on Amazon, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify today. So we'll see you next time on the GGB Podcast. <laughs>